five years, and BMI two years. I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, uh, let's see, maybe we should pull that cable around it's underneath right. your yeah. coat. It's okay. Um, uh, I, can, I can lose the microphone and shot here. Okay. Uh, the uh, only thing is, uh, just so we don't have the, ca the uh, cable uh, causing rustling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll cut off just about the level of the microphone. Okay. If I could, have you pivot counterclockwise towards your left in the chair. Uh -huh. Just go ahead and like... Barber. All the way. Barber pull over. There you go. Right, just right in there. That's just okay. about where I had it. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Let me uh, fine tune a little bit, Bobby. We'll okay, we'll fine. Go. Very good. Well, welcome home to Texas, Danny. Thank you. It's good to be here. Wonderful to see you because we've I had hear, incidentally, the weather's supposed to clear up sometime late tomorrow. Is that correct? I haven't heard. Yeah, it's uh, it's really shabby out there, isn't it? <laughs> yes. About 70, 73, no wind. <laughs> Beautiful. I don't remember February in Texas quite being like this. <laughs> we did it just for you, Debbie. Yeah, just well, I appreciate for you. <laughs> it. <laughs> well, first of all, let me ask you about uh, the move to Thursday night. Is that working out good for you? Uh, so far, it has. We um, we uh, it's very strange what's happening with the show right now because. We're encountering things like the Winter Olympics, like uh, the showing of, of, of Greece last week. But we're holding our own, and they've got us in a very good time slot between Greece and before, between Greece and Hill Street Blues. So uh, that's a big plus, and uh, things are looking real good. I, I, I'm fairly confident we'll be picked up and uh, resume shooting in June. We're finished right now. We finished about two weeks ago. The, um, I, I just wonder, because in our newsroom, we've had people talking about, I knew a guy just like that. I'm sure it's based on so-and-so. Are you encountering that as you travel around the country? I am, and uh, it's, it's strange, because my theory was that, that the, there are people like this in, in every field, but evidently there's one in every station that I've been to. It's incredible that somebody will come up in a whispered voice and say, you know, we have a guy exactly like that. Here he comes now, and I'll, I'll hush off. And, <laughs> but evidently, there's something about this this medium that uh, that attracts some at least one character like this to to every channel I've been on so far. As far as your own characterization, <clears throat> excuse me. As far as your own characterization, uh, did you uh, know anybody like that? Maybe they weren't in broadcasting, but did you have anybody in mind when you were working up the character? I don't think I had, <coughs> excuse me, I don't think I've had uh, a, a specific individual in mind. Uh, the fun part of this thing is it is almost a, a larger than life character in a certain way. I, we don't try to play it that way, but the, the fact is that uh, someone is with as many negative qualities, uh, qualities as he has is a, a rare bird, I think, but uh, not, to, so it's a combination, amalgamation, I would say, of, of several different people. Now, all close friends. <laughs> I don't know if I should address you as Daphne or Bill, mm -hmm. but now about that thirty-dollar abortion. Uh, number one, they cut that line out, if I'm not mistaken. Did they not? I don't think so. Well, when I looked at it again, when I saw it again, I, there was a line in there about that uh, his his contributing something for for the abortion. Of, um, but I thought the line was cut out. Well, I, now, I, you know, Dabney, Did you, you see it on the air? Did you see it? You may be the, right that it isn't specifically in there, but there's been so much written about it that maybe uh -huh. we think it's in there. Yeah, I think it's out. Yeah, I would, okay. I don't quote me, but I think it is. I remember the scene and, and missing that particular line, not that I, I like the line. Uh, we, we did take several things out that were offensive uh, to me and other people, and... Uh, what we came out with was the two-part uh, abortion show about abortion that you're referring to, which I think was uh, uh, tastefully done, and um, and I think we're we're proud of the show and think that it was done very well. In particular, I think that Joanna Cassidy's contribution there, uh, playing JoJo White, was spectacular. What she did and the way she handled that, and uh, that um, I think it was tastefully done. There's been quite a lot of controversy about it, Dabney, so I'm wondering now, is the network saying to you, hey, that's the way to go, get more controversial stuff? I don't, uh, I don't know. They haven't told me. I'm, I'm sometimes the last to hear that. The fact is that uh, the second show came on after we had finished shooting. 
So I don't, I usually get uh, what the network is telling the, the, uh, the executives uh, the second or third day during the week of the work week. So I haven't really communicated with them that much lately. And I, I really don't know, but um, our writers, and who happen to be the, also the producers, uh, don't really write with the idea in mind of being controversial or not being controversial. The fact is, um, it is controversial from time to time, but I don't think that's ever, I think that's an accident when, when it is that way. And it's a nice accident as far as I'm concerned, but uh, they don't write with that intent uh, from the outset. They have an idea of a story, and if it's controversial, that's okay. If it's not, that's all right, too. What do you have coming up in the way of storylines that you're particularly excited about? Um, I have no idea. I don't. I can't keep up with what's being on, what's been on, or what uh, what is coming up. As a matter of fact, because uh, I'm I'm a little bit uh, once having shot the show and then having gone over the shows a rough cut, what they call a rough cut, and giving them my notes and seeing it two or three times in that form. I don't usually watch the show on the air, uh, and that's usually a work night for me, a, a shooting night for me, so it's impossible to watch the show. Um, so I really I, I can't answer the question, to tell you the truth. I don't know, except that we, I, sure, I like all the shows we've shot, and one, uh, uh, we're very proud of what we're doing, which is uh, a little bit different, I think, than what you normally find, situation comedy-wise, anyway. Debbie, I could just see the reaction around here today. Uh, people hearing that you were coming to the studio and a number of people just wanting to see you in the halls and so forth. Um, I'm wondering now, do you feel that your popularity has picked up as a result of this series? Well, yeah, television is a funny thing. I, 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 it's um, amazing how, how, how many people you know, do watch television as opposed to, say, uh, motion pictures. And I've been very lucky in the last three years or four years uh, to, to be involved with some... Uh, uh, very successful uh, features, but uh, compared to the exposure one gets on, on television, it's incredible, I, I've noticed, and uh, since, since we came back on the air in December, the amount, or, uh, the, uh, the amount of, of recognition and acknowledgement of, of uh, what I'm doing, and it's, I like it a lot, it's a lot of fun. More autographs to sign. And yeah, that. and then whatever, and just a high bill or what, what have you, and uh, I actually prefer high Mr. Coleman, but uh, but uh, high bill will suffice in a pinch, and it's a lot of fun. People are very, very, uh, very enthusiastic about the show and the character, and because I think it's different, and they, they appreciate that. Better tables at the restaurants. Pardon? Better tables at the restaurants. Yeah, yeah, a lot more payoffs, you know. And uh, <laughs> but uh, it's it's fun. The whole thing has been a lot of fun the last five or six years. Now, Dabney, you're not going to just exclude your movie career, surely not. No, no, and it's not necessary to do that. I've got a couple of movies coming out, as a matter of fact, around Easter, uh, one of which I shot at the end of the summer uh, uh, last year, which uh, precluded our picking right up with Buffalo Bill and being in the fall season. That's why we had to wait until December, because I was finishing uh, the, at this movie uh, entitled Cloak and Dagger. Oh, that's with little Henry Thomas, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, right, e. right, that's coming out to Easter. <clears throat> and uh, evidently Universal Studios very high on that um, on that film. And what kind of a character do you play in that? I play two characters in that. Uh, oh. Neither one of them a bad guy, if you can believe that. I'll probably <laughs> be sued by someone for not being uh, the standard uh, bad egg, but uh, I play his father and then I play a, a fantasy figure, that uh, a spy, very uh, colorful, dashing, if you will, type of uh, character that he conjures up in his mind that so that accompanies him through this uh, spy caper. Is uh, Henry like he was in E.T.? Or? He's a terrific kid, yeah, and he is like that, and, and, and working with him was uh, a terrific experience. He's another, he's a Texas boy, I, I don't know whether you know that. Yes, San Antonio. San Antonio. And really um, uh, uh, all boy, and, and it's only an accident that he happens to be uh, talented and not showbiz at all, which I prefer. Uh, that has you know, always annoyed me to a certain extent, uh, whether it's in a child or an adult. A showbiz kind of personality is not something that I, I like that much, but he's a, he's a great kid and um, uh, very, very, very good and with terrific uh, ideas and, and defined opinions about what he wants to do and, and uh, creative choices. He's, he's wonderful. I think the film's going to be very good. What is the other movie? The other one is a little cameo that I did uh, 
I say that with a straight face now, you know, a little cameo of, with no modesty at all, I love that. That's when you know you've arrived, when you have to do a talk show and you have to catch a plane so you can't stay with Johnny. I'm sorry, I have to leave, I have to catch a plane. <laughs> That's another sure sign that you've made it. Uh, but uh, this is a little cameo in uh, a Muppet, a Muppet movie number three, I think it is, which was a, a really a delight working with those people and those, uh, and those Muppets. Are you a good who guy? Who are alive. Don't make any mistake about it. They are real. And it's a uh, no, bad guy. Bad guy. Back to typecasting. Yeah, yeah but I like that. That's fun. <laughs> One last question. Um, I recently, again, saw On Golden Pond. Did you see it recently on TV? No, again? I've seen it. You know, I've seen that several times. Yes. And, and, uh, and uh, you're just so wonderful. Everybody in it is I so thought, good. Uh, everybody and is so good in it. Yeah. Knowing that I was going to interview you, I was, I guess, uh, this thought occurred to me that here you were working with Henry Fonda and Jane Fonda. You worked with Jane also in 9 to 5. And did those two Fondas approach acting the same way, or were they different? From each other? Uh, from, as from as each actors. Other? Uh -huh. uh, I, um, yes, they're, they're totally different. Uh, well, the results are, are pretty good in both cases. But, they're, no, they're different in, in uh, the respect that Henry likes to um, uh, rehearse a lot. Uh, he plans it out. Uh, he almost uh, blueprints what he's going to do, and the performance uh, when he rehearses is is there. Whereas Jane doesn't rehearse a lot, uh, relies I think a little bit more on just her instincts when the camera's rolling, and if something happens a little bit differently, she's ready and willing to go with that, and which is also an interesting uh, and effective way of, of working. But uh, the end result is is quite. Uh, effective in both cases, and that was, uh, that was a real experience for me. I think the scene, your scene with Henry Fonda, where you uh, talk about the bedroom and sleeping yeah, together, right. that is a, a, a really, Dabney, one of the most memorable scenes, that I think. That was a lot of fun. That was, uh, that was the reason I, I wanted to do the movie, was just for that scene, and it's, uh, to, to work with him, and um, it was everything I thought it would be, and it's uh, something, experience, the entire experience, something I'll never forget. Well, Daphne, we wish you uh, continued good luck with Buffalo well, Bill. Thanks. It's good to see you again. I guess I'll see you again when in New York or something. God knows where, but uh, Let's it's hope. good to see you again. Yeah. Thanks, Daphne. Thank you. It's a lovely interview this time I saw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was, it was a terrific experience here. And um, it seems to me that Buffalo Bill, just hearing people, that people are watching it, more and more and that the audience is increasing. I guess the ratings reflect that too, don't they? It c except it's hard to tell when you're into a thing with the, the Olympics, Olympics and all. Olympics yeah. Greece also last yeah. uh, week, I think. Hard to tell. Before, I can't remember. Annihilated everything. You know, size and, and strength didn't mean that much. But uh, I didn't click with that, unfortunately. I always wanted to. And if you will just keep talking, it doesn't matter about anything, just so that you're talking. Well, that's the hardest thing. Isn't it? <laughs> What's the best? Does anybody here know without uh, my having to turn? Are you, are you rolling, Max? Yeah. Our 6 o'clock producer yeah. worked in Houston. Jan Phipps still. She probably know. Yeah. Is that the name of the place or the, or the, <laughs> that's the producer? The <laughs> uh, well, that's where I'm headed now. Are you looking at more movie scripts? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great ideas. But